the whole world is waiting, held hostage by a virus so new to humans, we have no immunity to it. We don't even fully understand it. What could free us is a vaccine. Never before have hundreds of scientists all over the world been focused on the same thing at the same time, creating a vaccine for COVID-19. At every hour of every day, scientists in at least 21 countries from the UK to Russia to China and Australia and to Germany, the United States and here in Canada are toiling away. At least 115 different teams of researchers. And though vaccine development cannot be rushed, speed is of the essence. This is an international race and Canada is in the running. There is only one way to be certain a vaccine works. Test it on humans. Eliza Granado, a microbiologist, is the first to be injected with a trial vaccine for COVID-19 in Oxford, England. I'm a scientist, so of course I want to try and support science, um, the scientific process, whenever I can. And uh, since I don't study viruses, I felt a bit useless these days, so <laughs> I felt like this is a very easy way for me to support the cause. Yeah, and that's why I'm here and I'm excited. Scientists at the Jenner Institute in Oxford are leading the pack in what's become an accelerated race for a safe and effective way to inoculate the world and allow us out of our bubbles. They hope to have 6,000 people in this human clinical trial by the end of May. Well, I think everybody agrees it's the only way we're going to get out of the um, lockdown, the social distancing, uh, and really be able to still have people protected as they go about their daily life. Vaccines usually take years, not months, to produce. This is happening at warp speed. There's a different urgency here in, in a pandemic setting. And so we're doing our phase one, the first in human study with this vaccine, um, uh, which will take place over the next week or so. And we'll immediately roll into the next phase of the study rather than waiting for a prolonged period of time uh, for all of the, the results over many months to, to come out. All vaccines expose the body to an antigen that won't cause disease but will provoke an immune response. For many vaccine hunters, the key is the spike protein. It acts as kind of a Trojan horse for the virus, bonding to human tissue and then unleashing live virus molecules. It, in theory, attaches harmless material that looks like the virus to the spike protein, essentially fooling the body and hopefully stimulating an immune response one that blocks or kills the virus. As soon as China released the genetic sequence of the virus in January, work on vaccines began. At least seven teams have reached the first phase of human clinical trials, some using weakened or inactivated parts of the virus, some using new, entirely synthetic methods. Nothing is guaranteed. The pressure is on, definitely, from my parents, where they ask me, so Nadine, did you do it today? Do you have a vaccine for us? Keep trying. Human clinical trials are now underway in the UK, the US, Germany, and China. So many potential vaccines, it's possible there could eventually be more than one that works. I think we're very optimistic in our vaccine's ability to be safe and potentially effective. This man lost a close friend to COVID-19, and he volunteered for one of two human trials underway in the U.S. You hear everybody say, this is the new normal. I don't want this to be the new normal. I want this to be an inconvenience, and then we can get back to normal. In Canada, this lab at the University of Saskatchewan is on the fast track. The Vaccine and Infectious Disease Organization International Vaccine Centre, or Vito Intervac, was the first in Canada to isolate the novel coronavirus, and it just got $23 million in federal funding to accelerate work on a vaccine. We operate one of the largest um, high containment facilities in the world, and that allows us to work with viruses like the COVID-19 virus. Dr. Gertz and his team are working on what's called a subunit vaccine. Only a very small part of the virus is introduced into the body, lowering the chance of an adverse reaction. We were also the first lab in Canada to have an animal model, ferrets in this case, up and running. We now also have developed a second animal model, hamsters. And uh, we are one of the few organizations in the world right now that actually have a vaccine already in animal testing. Testing in humans at this lab, it's hoped will start in the fall and then be expanded. If everything goes right, Vito could get emergency authorization for a made-in-Canada vaccine 
as early as late spring or early summer of 2021. That is much faster than, than um, it normally is. It can take uh, seven to 10 years for a normal vaccine to be developed for humans. Um, so the 12 to 18 months that everybody is talking about is really already a very, very fast accelerated way of doing it. Researchers at at least five other Canadian universities, including Laval, are working around the clock too. Well, there is not that many labs in Canada, actually, that, are, uh, that have the expertise to de develop vaccines, and uh, I have uh, this expertise. Dr. Denis Leclerc and his team are taking a different approach. Even before this pandemic, they worked with using dead molecules from a plant virus. It's harmless to humans, but still triggers a strong immune response. They look like something dangerous, but they are not at all because they cannot replicate. And that's, that's the idea. It's like a lure when you go fishing. You know, you want to attract the, the big fish with this. That's what we are doing with it. There's lots of collaboration and lots of promise, but it's only when solid data from human clinical trials emerges that we'll know if anyone has created the magic bullet. It can happen. Polio was once one of the most feared infectious diseases in the world. Yearly outbreaks infecting millions, killing and crippling thousands of children. Then, in 1955, Jonas Salk announced he'd come up with a vaccine, and cases of polio are now reduced by 99%. The scramble now is to replicate that with a vaccine for COVID-19. The lab that seems closest right now is the one in Oxford, England. If human trials here are a success, they say they could be ready to administer millions of doses as soon as this September. Personally, I, I'm very optimistic it's going to work. Optimism and lots of hard work as the world waits for science to get our lives back to normal. With me now is Dr. Stephen Jones, a Canadian virologist who is a key figure in the creation of a vaccine for the Ebola virus developed by Canada's National Microbiology Lab in Winnipeg. He is now in Saskatoon. Dr. Jones, thanks for joining us. That optimism from the Jenner Institute is encouraging, but correct me if I'm wrong about this. Human clinical trials, I think, fail far more often than they succeed. And the record for creating a completely new vaccine is about four years. So is 12 to 18 months for a COVID-19 vaccine possible? That is actually a really good question. And I was surprised to hear that they, they feel that they, they would have a candidate uh, ready for use in September. That would be a remarkable achievement. Um, and you're completely right. Uh, even the target of 18 to 24 months is extremely ambitious. Um, we're essentially two months through that time frame. Um, so at best, 16 months away. Um, and again, that's, that's really ambitious. Four years is a very reasonable time frame for development of a, of a new vaccine. Vaccines have been uh, extremely safe and effective uh, public health interventions because we go to extraordinary lengths to make sure they're safe and efficacious before they're put into use. Um, we are essentially giving something to someone who is at the moment entirely well. Um, and the last thing we can afford is for um, that vaccine to have a reaction or to um, make disease worse than it would otherwise be. Mm -hmm, which is why we do human clinical trials. We've made vaccines, of course, for other dead and deadly diseases, including Ebola, which is what you were involved with. But are some viral diseases easier to make a vaccine for than others? Yes, um, they are. Uh, Ebola was difficult to work with um, primarily because it is so dangerous to the people who are using it. We had to work inside the level four lab and use all of the special biosafety precautions. Um, and that makes it very difficult to, to use. With coronaviruses, the problem is slightly different. Um, there's a, a certain amount of evidence that um, coronaviruses, when you're infected, actually produce quite um, relatively poor and short-lived immune responses to infection. And you would normally expect the virus infection to produce you know, the best type of immunity. It's the other problem with coronavirus is, is that during the response to both the MERS outbreak um, in 2012 to, to, to 14, and in the SARS outbreak, we tried to uh, make uh, vaccines. And if the wrong type of antibodies are produced, then they can actually make disease worse. It's a phenomenon called antibody enhancement, and it's something that at all costs we have to try and avoid in the development of a, a vaccine to this virus. That's comforting to know. I mean, uh, but on the other hand, deeply worrying. Is it possible? It, there is no vaccine for any other coronavirus, I think, from SARS to the common cold. They don't exist. So is it possible that there 
might not be uh, that it might not be possible to create a vaccine for COVID-19, that it's just a virus that's resistant to vaccination? Yes, it's possible. I mean, we hope not, um, but there's no reason to think that it would be easy. I mean, it would be absolutely awesome if we have a vaccine in September. It would actually be incredible. If we have a vaccine after 18 months, that would be uh, you know, an outstanding outcome as well. We do have to face the possibility that it could be four years or or never. It, it, until we start to do this, um, we're not going to know how humans respond to, the, to these vaccinations. And it's, it's important to know that uh, not only do they have to be safe, but they also have to induce neutralizing antibodies, antibodies which will stop the virus from infecting cells. And a lot of the trials which are being used now are using technologies which are in their infancy, um, haven't been traditionally used to, to, to make a lot of vaccines in the past, maybe one or two. And, and so we don't know how well they'll um, work. If it is never, if it's not possible to create a vaccine for COVID-19, where does that leave the world? If you look at some of the projections which are out right now, um, there's a reasonably good chance. I think it's almost certain that the, the, there will be another peak um, towards the fall. It's not clear uh, how much the virus will disappear over the summer. Uh, normally, an influenza virus sort of drops right down. Uh, it isn't clear this virus will do that, but, but we would anticipate a peak. And um, if we have successive phases of um, increasing social distancing and, and uh, economic restrictions and then releasing them, you would anticipate that there would be a series of, uh, potentially a series of waves where more and more people gradually get infected from the, the virus. Uh, and we can hope um, that that will lead to um, herd immunity without overwhelming the, the health system. Um, but hope isn't an, uh, an awesome strategy for dealing with a, an outbreak like this. So I think we, we do have to believe that we can make a vaccine. A lot of very clever people are working on it. Um, otherwise, we could be in this situation for um, at least two years, maybe more.